Hi, I'm going to first explain the concepts of the 1-7 pie chart, and then I'll go into more depth for triangulation and finding fortresses. So the first thing you want to do is go into Options, Video Settings, Other, and make sure Debug Profiler is on. What this does is it opens the pie chart whenever F3 is open, so that you don't have to hit Shift F3. From here, you're going to go into Game Render, Level, Entities, and then go into Block Entities. So your pie chart should be green like this. And we're going to be looking at the bottom right number. And this is the only pie chart screen that you'll need for the whole run. So what you want to do is set this up in standard settings. Um, you can look in the description for the text and just copy that into your standard settings file so that it's always open to this page. Um, so how the pie chart works is that it picks up chess and spawners. Chests are slightly smaller than spawners for the spike, and it picks up the spike within a 64 block radius sphere from the player. So if I'm still within 64 blocks, it'll be rendered in. Um, but once I go out of that range, the spike will disappear. And this is uh, spherical, so if I go high up, then it's going to disappear at some point. And then it also, the spike has to be on your FOV. So if I'm not looking at the chest, it's obviously not going to get picked up. If I lower my FOV, look to the side, it's not going to be there anymore. Once I look at it, it'll be there. Um, and then another thing with the pie chart is that it does take a while for it to refresh. So if you look over to it, it will take a few seconds to adjust to the new number. So what you want to do is just constantly update it as you're moving so that you get fast readings. Many of these concepts are the same as in 116, but there is one slight difference in 17, which is that if you have a bunch of chests, even when you're farther than 64 blocks away, you will still pick up a little bit of a spike on the pie chart. Um, so we can use this mechanic to find fortresses from far away, even when they're further than 64 blocks. This is probably a bug, um, but it's very useful. Alright, so let's talk about strongholds and triangulation. So this is a map that I made that shows you where the stronghold is, and it shows all of the chests in the stronghold, which are represented in red. So you have library chests, altar chests, and this food chest. And then this is the portal room here with the spawner, which is going to be the biggest spike. So the general concept for triangulation is throwing an eye and then running until you hit a spike. Now I just magnified the number so that it's easier for you to see. But you're going to have a baseline pi number, which means there's no spike. And you can either refresh it constantly or just leave it up. Um, but just know that if you don't refresh it, then you're going to be a little bit late to notice when the spike happens. Um, so one other thing is that you want to look slightly down, because it has to be on your FOV. So if I'm looking up like this, then I'm not looking at any of the spikes that are underground. So you just have to look slightly down to pick up the spikes. And then what you want to do is... Once you notice that a chest or any spike has been loaded, then you want to run at least 50 blocks further into the spike. This is because it picks it up from 64 blocks spherically, so if you use some basic trig, it's going to be on average about 50 blocks farther away. So you're just going to run, it's about 11 sprint jumps, and then you're going to throw another eye. And then from here, it's going to be very easy to triangulate with one more eye. Um, because you just can draw a line, and you can also figure out when the stronghold ends. So here, I noticed that the spike has disappeared, so that means I passed everything. And then you go off to the side, throw your last eye, and you can triangulate exactly where the portal room is. Something else that you should note is that the pi numbers will be different for everyone, because it's hardware dependent. So. I recommend setting your max frame rate to just slightly above your refresh rate for your monitor. 
This will make it a little bit easier to have consistent readings. Um, but then it also depends on your FOV. So yeah, you just want to test this out. I linked this map in the description just so you can get a sense of what the spikes look like for you. Something else that you can do is you can lower your FOV to double check that you're hitting the stronghold. So if I do 30 FOV here and dig down and I notice that at some point the spike disappears, that means I missed. So you can look up and look around to see where the spike is. So I notice it's more this way, so I'll probably adjust to dig down. Obviously you want to hit the stronghold to begin with, but this is just a good way to double check. So now we're going to look at false positives, which are the really annoying part about triangulation. Because mine shafts and dungeons both have spawners that will make a spike. So oftentimes mine shafts will have at least two spawners. Um, so I have the mine shaft laid out in purple here, and you'll see a spike that looks just like a spawner. And it's oftentimes really difficult to distinguish mine shafts from strongholds. Um, but the best way to figure it out is just by running farther and seeing if there's a sharp drop-off. Um, because in a stronghold you have a lot more chests, there's just a lot more going on. Um, so usually you can just run around a little bit and see that the spike drops off. But it is recommended to still check on most false positives like this because you can have a mineshaft overlapped with a stronghold. And you can also have situations like this, where you have three spawners that are pretty close. So you're going to have a big spike, and it's going to be hard to distinguish. That's just part of triangulation, and sometimes you have to throw an extra eye to verify that it's the stronghold. And then we also have dungeons, which are a bit easier to figure out, because on their own, they'll have a pretty big spike, because it's a chest and two spawners. Or, sorry, a spawner and two chests. But... Anywhere around it will have absolutely nothing. So you can lower your FOV and see that it quickly drops off everywhere else. And you can say with good certainty that this is not a stronghold. Alright, so let's talk about how to find the fortress with your pie chart. You want to make sure you're on 16 RD before entering, because this will make it a lot easier to find your spike once you enter the nether. Once you load in, you want to wait. Um, a few seconds before pausing. So I'm going to wait until my chunks load to about 1000 and then I can pause so that all the chunks will load. If you pause too early then your chunks won't load at all. And then from here you want to go down to 30 FOB and just spin around refreshing your pie chart. You're just going to look for the biggest spike. So for me it's like 0.07 here. And so I'm just going to go around and you'll notice the fortress is that way. So the pie chart is super accurate. It's never going to lead you the wrong way if you just go to the biggest spike. And you're going to want to test out your numbers. So just load up another and see what each another looks like for your pie chart because this is hardware dependent. For me, if it's about 0.02 and under, that means it's a dead nether. There's no fortress at all. It's 0.03 on 30 FOV, that it means there is a far fortress, and anything higher is like a medium distance or close fortress. And you don't want to be going to a small spike if there's a bigger spike in another direction, because sometimes this small spike is just the other fortress, and somehow that is counting towards that spike. So yeah, just spin around, look for the biggest spike, and go there. The pie chart's also really helpful for finding the spawner in enclosed fortresses. So let's say you're naving the good part. At intersections or while running, you can quickly check and refresh the pie chart. So I know there's nothing this way, there's nothing above me, um, there's nothing this way, there's a spike in this general direction, so I'd go forwards. And then let's say this, uh, this way continued, I would look, there's no spike. Um, so I see a spike this way, I go down this direction. So yeah, that's basically it for the pie chart. As long as you understand the concept of it, then you should be good for runs. And you can improvise as you see fit. So I could, you know, you can 30 FOV, kind of use it like mapless. 
Um, there are just situations where you can improvise and figure out where the spawner is, where the stronghold is, and stuff like that. And yeah, thanks for watching.